I, I think so. Well, at least locally, yeah. That's what's up. Are we good? <laughs> Hi, and welcome to the SEO podcast, Internet Marketing Unknown Secrets. Yes. Yes. <laughs> welcome back, everybody. One, welcome to another fun-filled edition, having some, uh, some technical uh, challenges. I guess, or just... Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if you tuned in a little bit early, you heard a little of the background process yeah. of us trying to figure out what the hell is going, going on, on with Ustream.tv. <laughs> My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWebStyle. And I'm Paul Hansen, sales manager at eWebStyle. We have a great podcast for you guys today. Um, it came up at the last minute. We found this great article. Uh, we're going to be covering it. Um, we, we were kind of batting ideas around, and we suggested that we actually should be talking about uh, Google local search and and some of the uh, aspects of Google local search. Before we jump into that, though, we certainly want to talk uh, briefly about what we spoke on our last podcast. In fact, our tip from our last podcast: don't neglect mobile search. It represents 10% of your search traffic potentially. Yes. So don't don't neglect it. And now, should you change your strategy to focus on it? Eh, probably not yet. But it is Don't a, give it all away. Yeah, yeah. There you go. go back and go back and <laughs> go back listen and to listen that to podcast. Um, it, it, the other thing that we want to cover, we've got lots of really good news. We've got some good Facebook stuff going on. Um, we actually have an SEO joke. Uh, is that what the uh, Eugene? Yeah, yeah. Eugene, I'm not even going to attempt to go with his last name. So, um, Pan Root Pan Rudkevich. Rudkevich. Yeah. Ruth Pan um, So here's the joke. I don't. I think on paper it's really clear uh, the <laughs> intent. Uh, so we'll see if this works uh, on audio. So uh, here's the joke. So this SEO ex. That's a really bad intro to a joke. Yeah. So the joke is now beginning. <laughs> so this SEO expert walks into a bar, grill, pub, public house, Irish bar, bartender, drinks. Beer, wine, liquor, mixed drinks, <laughs> shots, tequila, Cantina. vodka, cantina. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, since we're international, I thought it was pretty cool. I was yeah. like, wow, that's that's pretty cool. But if I told that to any of my friends, they'd be like, no. Yeah, they just yeah, don't like, get. Where's the joke? Yeah, right? they just don't get the technical. Uh, I'm like, come on, man, it's funny, you know, it's a play on uh, on the old old I school keyword, joke. Yeah, yeah you know. Keywords, on, you know? <laughs> uh, you and know? there was a like on there by Christina Hawkins. By the way, this could be. The first interaction on Facebook this by year? a non-male. Oh, that's what's by up. A, no, by no, a, we had somebody that that dogged our logo. Okay, uh, well that was last year. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right. This is the first one this year. Uh, Christina Hawkins is an interesting uh, kind of uh, small world story. Uh, when I was uh, a freshman in high school, my dad was in the Air Force, so I moved every two years. I was actually in Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama going to a private school, St. James Private School. My brother was there too, uh, and his good friend and Christina went to prom together. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so my brother Don't said Don't tell me she found you from the podcast. No, my brother oh. found us and put us in contact on oh, Facebook, okay. and then uh, we haven't gotten together. Uh, she's down in Sugar Land, which is real close uh, here in Houston, so wow, we're going to get together. Small world. And, yeah, <laughs> pretty small world. Very so, small world. Shout out to her. Her company is Global Specs Web and Graphic Design, so guys, go check that out. Um, she does some good stuff out there. I've actually checked some of it out. Um, I am trying to get caught up on the audio, and okay. I was talking to Chuck earlier. And what I mean by that is we broadcast and uh, and create our podcast on Fridays, uh, 9.15 Central Standard Time-ish, depending on technical issues. Yeah. Um, and you can always watch us live. Uh, and please do. It's it's actually good. We're getting more and more people. You can actually interact with, uh, with us during the podcast, so that's kind of cool, and get questions answered on the podcast. Um, so then that podcast, we strip out the audio, and eventually I get it up onto iTunes and Podomatic. And I've been trying to get caught up because we're about a month behind, but I just I keep getting stymied by uh, technical issues there, too. But you can always watch it on the Ustream page. We record everything, right? Yep. And uh, as, we, as we do these shows, we record them, post them directly to the Ustream. Um, here's a little bit. So we got 73 Facebook likes right now. For real? Yeah, we're up to 73. Wow. There's at least that's, 73 people who like our podcast. That's what's up. That's cool. We may get 300 downloads a day, but at least 73 <laughs> like us. <laughs> so, by the way, if you're downloading our podcast and you haven't liked us yet, 
just stop listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that means about 13 people have liked us since last year. I remember we were right at 60. So yep. if you like us, remember, hit us on our Facebook page. Let us know who you are, what you do, what company you're with, and we will definitely give you a shout-out on that. Or give us a call, 713-592-6724. And, and let, since we're already talking about it, there's other ways. You can actually send us an email, podcast at e-webstyle.com. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash ewebstyle, no dash in that, uh, facebook.com slash ewebstyle, youtube.com slash ewebstyle, bleh.com yeah. slash ewebstyle. <laughs> and, and if you requested a website analysis, we, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on with this thing, uh, and you haven't gotten it, send it again, because someone, uh, Chuck, who is that that hit us yesterday? Uh, Gareth Copeland. Gareth Copeland hit us up, said, hey, I, re- I, I submitted a request, I, I hadn't got one back. Um, and I haven't got a reply, so he, he emailed us directly and said, okay, don't worry, we're going to jump on that. So if you ran into that, submit it again or shoot us an email. By the way, that's why we recommend for all of our clients that uh, forms get submitted into a database first and then emailed because mm-hmm. we're not getting the emails, but if we were submitting oh, it in into it. a database, no, if we were. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh I was like, wow, so we can just go back we and just look. Go to, yeah, that would, that's, what we, great. that's what we do for our clients. So, yeah, we need to implement that for us as well. Um, and usually you don't think about doing it for simple forms, but we're getting a lot of responses from that. So, uh, and we don't so do as we them. say, don't do as we do. Exactly. Yeah. Um, in the news, IBM Jeopardy supercomputer beats human. That, I'm not, that's not even exciting. Uh, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, but it's pretty much to be It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian students get online textbooks. You know, and, and when I was reading this, uh, I was kind of thinking, well, you know, like uh, I think Hyundai is now giving away an iPad as the user's owner's manual for the Hyundai. So instead of giving them an owner's manual, they get an iPad, and inside the iPad are the, is the, oh, owner's, the owner's manual. manual. Um, and I was thinking, because I, I never thought through this process. When I went to college, like, lap, no one had laptops. Oh, yeah. And, like, everyone has them now. Is theft up on campuses? Plus, like, before you could walk away with a bag and you'd have some books that yeah. you probably didn't yeah. want. <laughs> they were probably worth 20 bucks a book. Most people never carried more than two books. Yeah. So you maybe got 40 bucks. <laughs> Now you're walking away with a laptop. Oh, yeah. Cell phone, laptop, iPad. Oh, yeah. So All kinds I wonder, of stuff. I wonder if theft is up on campuses. I don't know. Maybe it should be. <laughs> um, and I read this this one article. I actually didn't read the article. I saw the headline. I thought it was appropriate for what we've experienced this week. Why people power is cool again. And this is talking about uh, uh, people-powered directories, kind mm-hmm. of like, I don't know, Yahoo, Yahoo. directory. Um, and and it, I thought it was interesting because last week we submitted some of our clients to Yahoo directory. Um, on Monday, Paul sends me an email with a with a link to Yahoo canceling uh, paid, paid, paid inclusion. Paid inclusion. <laughs> and uh, you know, and I immediately start justifying. Well, this is fine because we'll at least have a year. And then Charles comes in, and chimes in, and he's like, you know, dudes, this is like. 2009. Yeah, <laughs> <the I article>. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently, paid inclusions made it through their removal of paid inclusions. Oh, paid inclusion, yeah. We don't know if they never took it down or they took it down and they added it back up. But uh, apparently, this article, and this was on CNN Technology, um, uh, apparently, people power is cool again. Yeah, now, this is not to be mistaken with the Yahoo web search. You can still be in Yahoo's web directory and not in their local direct. excuse me, not in their directory. You can still be in their web database, but not in their directory. Yeah. There is a difference. By the way, their web database is Bing. Bing yeah, basically. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so if they actually canceled their paid people search subscription, you just wouldn't be on Yahoo technically anymore. Yeah, cause. you yeah you wouldn't be in their web their 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 directory directory. And and funny, my first thought when I saw that is you know we've been kind of riding <laughs> Yahoo down as they yeah. sell off everything. We're like, how are they going to make any money? There's Seriously. no paid, <laughs> paid. So apparently they're, maybe that's the only way they're making money anymore. All right. So uh, we local were talking, we we're batting ideas around local search. And here's, here's how, maybe you guys have noticed this already. Maybe you haven't noticed this. Here's how complicated local search is now. <laughs> um, let's say I do a search uh, for, we'll do plumber, right? And I, it, Google knows I'm in Houston based on my IP address. Uh, sometimes it knows even in a, in a more narrow focus exactly where I am. 
like when I was up in in uh, in New Jersey, it knew I was in the town of Franklin Lakes. And by the way, in New Jersey, there's a town. Uh, well, I think the, the the logic is there's a town every one day horse ride away. Okay. Right. So that's how the towns kind of uh, cropped up in New Jersey, which means about a five minute car ride away. Okay. <laughs> it knew I was in Franklin Lakes at the time, so it's it's pretty detailed. It can get pretty mm-hmm. detailed. We know that in Houston. Houston and a lot of kind of little municipalities get to get, tend to get thrown in there, uh, but it's got a pretty good. Uh, Google knows where you're at uh, mm-hmm. typically, so if you do a search for a plumber, you get one set of results. If you do a search for Houston plumber, you get another set of results. If you do a sp- search for plumber, and on the left of Google there is a place where you can change your location. Mm-hmm. If you change that location, you'll get different results. Um, so, so three searches. For the same technical, well, I'm looking for the basically same basically for the same and then doing a test, yeah, and then three different sets of results. So, where does this sit? I mean, what is the importance? And then this all really does tie into uh, Google Local Places or the six pack. Remember our our tip from uh, podcast number ninety uh, was uh, was the rap Google Places is the place to be. That's yeah. Google Places A to G. Uh, was it? Is it G? I don't know. A, B, C, D, E, F. Yes, it's G, um, because that's the seventh letter of the alphabet. <clears throat> um, I like those awkward sounds. <laughs> <laughs> if this is a radio, we'd have got fired. <laughs> but no, I, I think local we search is our license. Yeah. <laughs> local search is important enough. You know, we talked about it a lot last year. I think. Uh, and I'll say this, even though I said it last podcast, this 2011 is the year of local search, even though last podcast 2011 was the year of mobile search. Mobile search. <laughs> Next podcast it'll be something else. Yeah. It's, uh, well, it's, I don't know. We got a lot of information yeah. here to go on local search. This may be the beginning of the longest podcast SEO podcast. Yeah, for real. This is going to go in, until in, March in history. Uh, so basically, local search is extremely important, and we've you've heard this. Yeah, I've kicked this dead horse several times. You know, the, the local pack or the seven, six, seven pack is going to be the place to be uh, because everything is local. Every, you know, Google recognized the value of it, so they started putting things into place end of 2009, beginning of 2010. So we want to, you know, cover this again. Local search, mobile search. So here we go. 2011 is the year of local slash mobile search. I guess which could kind of, well, I won't say it's kind of the same thing, but they are definitely uh the well, merging well certainly google knows where your phone is too yes. right um i i think there's probably some way you can turn that off or turn it on uh but you know it, it, when you go into google maps it knows where you're at so mm-hmm. when you're searching other google places it probably knows where you're at and and that's kind of the whole whole goal of i think of of google you know having android and having uh their operating system on phones is that you know, when you start doing searches, it can actually sell ads that are immediately around you. So if you're hungry, um, you know, it, there's three restaurants around that are paying to have yes. their ad put in front of you uh, because you're right there. And, uh, you know, it's actually a, it's a, of high value to us. If I am looking for a restaurant, I want to know three restaurants right around me. I don't want to know the three restaurants that's, that are paying Google that may or may not be within the next 30 miles. Yes. I, I, and I completely agree with that. Uh, here's a great uh, line I'm going to pull from this. It's, and here's kind of why we're going over local search. And I'm going to read, I'm going to quote this uh, directly from the article. It says, it's getting harder and harder, even for local SEO experts, pull for this survey survey to keep up with all the developments in our industry. I think this basic blah, 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 blah. Basically, so things are changing so fast. You know, you've got Facebook going local, Yelp going local, Google Places is local. Uh, excuse me, what else? Being local, Yahoo local algorithm. I mean, they all have separate algorithms for local search. So I thought this was awesome. So what this guy did is he polled a bunch of local SEO experts about different things that are important to your local search. And we've done this before. I think about a year ago we did uh, we did a podcast that was a survey of different uh, SEO experts on what factors are important to SEO. And then they rated them, okay, which, you know, 75% think this is important, 25 don't. So, okay, what, well, what is important in local? Well, let's make sure we okay. give credit on this article, right? Okay. Um, it's from David Ming, or, or Mim, uh, M-I-H-M. So you guys can find this. Uh, we're just going to kind of briefly look at these numbers. There's a lot of details in here. Um, they asked a whole lot of people mm-hmm. their opinions of this, 
and then their specific text responses uh, of their opinions to this is included. We're just going to kind of go over the highlights. Um, I highly recommend that you go pull this article uh, and, and read through it uh, in detail because, uh, you know, just like I described, if, if Plummer, if Plummer in Houston, if Plummer and you happen to be in Houston is something that you're going after or whatever that key term is, uh, you really need to be on top of local search and this will this will help you understand at least what the experts out there feel. Of course, we don't know the Google algorithm and, and we probably never will. Yeah. I, my standing offer, I will give anyone who gives me the Google algorithm, I will give them $10. I give you 20 bucks. 30. I'm not, I'm not going that so. <laughs> That's just not how I'm, that's 30. I don't want it that bad. 31. <laughs> You're like, the price is right. If you uh, overbid, you lose. So I'll take 29. All right. So uh, kind of the first thing that's listed here is general importance of claiming places page and local listings. Uh, of uh, your local listing, and uh, I this think that's kind of self. I thought that was kind of self-explanatory. Yes, you you do need to claim your listing. Why? You probably have fifty of them out there. We had like a ton of listings out there. Duh. Get find one that looks good, claim it, bang. Very important. Everyone said that was an importance of like four point four out of five. So everybody, you know, just about everybody poll said that was very important. With very high agreement. Now I don't really understand their. Uh, a high agreement or disagreement. So a 1.3 is moderate agreement. This is a 0.9, which means high agreement. So I'm guessing the lower the number, the more the agreement. The, the less the, it's probably, uh, if I remember my statistics class, it's probably the uh, deviation. So the deviation is 0.9, which is, is low, which means that everyone is in a tight framework and everyone agrees with that. Enough of the science. And I'm lost, so. <laughs> I'm like, wow, standard deviation was a long time ago. So basically, oh, yeah. get your listing, find it, you, you know, search as many different ways for your business as you can. You're going to find multiple listings. Find one that's most completed, complete it, and then claim it. And we'll give you some advice about listings. Don't get yours banned. Yes, yes, definitely don't do And don't try to cheat the system. Yeah, definitely don't try. Not that we did, but, you know, kind of. Never mind. No. I, okay. I know where you're going, and this is this is not wrong. It's not right. The reality is, is I was trying to mirror for one of our clients what I saw at other physicians' facilities, and those other physicians' facilities, it's working that way, mm -hmm. and ours, it's not. And we were getting banned, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm doing exactly what they're doing, mm -hmm. so get your proverbial together. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. So the next one was that your business address is in the city of the search. Now, this was considered a 4.16 out of 5, so of high importance, and there was high agreement. Um, I thought this was really cool because we got a, I got a call last week uh, from a guy in Oklahoma. I cannot remember his name for the life of me, but it's sitting in my email. And he says, hey, listen, I'm in a small city just outside of Tulsa, and I know a lot of people out there have the same concern. I want to market to Tulsa. Yes, I want my listing here in my city, but Tulsa is where the meat of my business is going to come from. So, what do you do to do that? You know, uh, okay, no, do, do you, you don't want to just well, you, one, you you got to have it in your main city. If you live in a suburb, you got to have that listing there. But there's a lot of different things you can do if you want to market there. You can go get. A, I've told people, you know, you can go get a PO box. You know, you can borrow someone's. Address that you know you can find a, 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 a faulty. Now, now this this is just flat out lying, and I'm not going to endorse it. But you can just go make up an address and do that. But there are complications with doing Potential that. Potential complications. Yeah. So you can do it, and you can probably get away with it. And it, it also depends. It? No. It depends on your business, uh, and it wasn't Chris either. It yeah. depends on <laughs> on the type of business that you're in. So if you're a storefront and you're in the suburbs, you certainly don't want your your store showing up as being in downtown yes. Houston when you're out in one of the suburbs. Uh, so you got to be mindful of that. If it's a service that you provide, again back to plumbing, um, you know it may help people find you, and really you go to them. So it doesn't matter if you're located in downtown Houston or or in any mm -hmm. of the suburbs as long as wherever the client's located is something that you're going to service. So um, so, so be mindful of that. It's not just, hey, I got to get on the first page uh, for this term. It, 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 you know, the type of business makes a significant yes. difference too. And also, you know, like a tutor may not want to drive that far. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to be in downtown Houston? Uh, and, and people are kind of mindful of that also where, 
Uh, I'm looking for a tutor. I want a tutor who's pretty close to me. I don't need yeah. a tutor driving all the way across town. Uh, and, and I typically I like to do business in between where I live and where I work. I, I would prefer not to go out of that if I if I don't have to to make it easy and convenient for me. All right, so we've got uh, the next one. You want to take the next uh, one? Associating your places page with your proper categories. I mean, I can't stress this enough. And this would be one of probably like one of the very first things you do. You're setting up your Google Places listing. Make sure that you have you have uh, utilized as many categories as you po they will possibly allow you to. This will help make sure that your listing is 100% complete. Now, there's a couple ways you can do these listings. These categories. You can select categories. Google has predefined categories. I would tell you that. My first thought would be to to go with one, use their categories as much as possible. Yes. You can create your own categories, but um, I can give you an example. Yes. Google, there we go. Google Boost, right? Uh, I don't know if it's been released across mm -hmm. the country. It certainly is available here in Houston. It's a kind of a paid listing with Google local places and. Google Boost in order to determine which keywords show up. Remember a couple of our podcasts mm -hmm. we were complaining uh, that we were showing up for things like marketing, not internet marketing, but marketing, marketing is general. Marketing. Um, and uh, and so we sent an email to, to Google and they, they seem to have gotten it straightened out. That's very good. But the, the made up categories, if you will, uh, are not being, they don't take those categories into consideration when figuring out keywords for which to show our ad. Okay. So they're only they're only basing it off of you know internet marketing. I don't remember what the, I think internet marketing is one of the categories. Um, not SEO, um, Houston or something. What are, I have one category that actually has SEO in it. They don't have an SEO category and. Uh, at least not that I recall, and and so we're not showing up for SEO keywords mm -hmm. in the Google Boost, but we are for internet marketing and marketing in general. So um, that's uh, that's the reason that you want to make sure that your categories are right. And now, if you're going to uh, add your own, if you're going to add your own separate categories, here, here's what I'd recommend: make sure that you have, if you want a keyword that is not a Google category, let's say uh, blue boob arm widgets, right? And that's not a category. Make sure that that text is in your places listing somewhere in the text. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you decide to in create the your description own, yeah, of what you in do. the description, yep. it's it's and in other places you might want to put it in your, you know, the title. Or, I mean, there's a million places you can put it, but just make sure that that keyword is listed throughout your your local listing text so that people can find it because the text is keyword searchable. As I mean, everything just about everything Google's keyword searchable. Yep. Um, the next one is product service keyword in place page business title. Um, and this is an interesting one. Okay, this one had a little bit of disagreement to it. Um, would it help? Yes. I, I, and uh, from what I understand, this is to be as you know, and our business title should be e web style web design internet mark search engine optimization company. Uh, yeah, yeah, but no. <laughs> if that don't, makes any sense. Don't do it. Um, and I'm kind of glancing at some of the comments here. One of them is saying, yes, sad to say, but I see a plethora of businesses that are ranking well in that se in that seven pack uh, as having the name in, in the business. Now, what this really means is you should probably have keywords in your business name. Okay. But you, you Google will ding you if you're changing your business name to manipulate their system. Oh, so... Like, Kind of like back in the day, for, and uh, you know, people an older generation will definitely recognize this when you know in the yellow pages people would say, "My name is Triple A Bail Bonds." Everybody, you know, I'm sure there's a Triple A Bail Bonds in every uh, city. I know there's never mind. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna open Quadruple A. Yeah, yeah, and that's what people do to get to the front of the to get to the front of the yellow pages heading. Uh, they would put AAA, and that's kind of how people are doing. Oh, let me put uh, web design in front of you know Joe Schmo marketing, whatever. Where Yellow Pages used to allow that, mm -hmm. and actually that may have been their name. Mm -hmm. um, and if that was their name, great. Uh, but if you want to, maybe you want to get a DBA and 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 you know open that DBA listing so that it actually has those keywords in. Yeah. Um, because uh, yes, I believe it does have importance into. Don't manipulate it. Yeah. Don't change your business name um, if you haven't legitimately changed your business name because you can have some some problems. Some and that's kind of I'm like, yeah, but no. So yeah, it, it would help. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't make any significant changes to do it. 
Uh, this next one I love. I know a lot of people are have are, are they want to hear about this, and it's called the proximity. It, basically, it's judging the importance of the proximity of your business address to the city centroid. Are you sure you're qualified to answer this question? Uh, no, I'm obviously I, I, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not. I appreciate. I was going to speak authoritatively on it. <laughs> <laughs> With great conviction and yes. passion, <laughs> but I'm certainly not qualified. Let's get somebody who's qualified out here to actually answer this question. Let's bring out the one and only Charles Lewis Mo Sirius, the SEO rapper, to uh, to help us answer this question about the city, the city centroid. centroid. What is the city centroid? I think um, centroid is actually a uh, is a geometric. Uh, term that refers to the center of the mass of a city. Yes. Um, so, so here he is. Sorry. What's up? Centroid. Centroid. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is your thinking on the proximity? What do, What do we have? We have this as high importance and moderate agreement between the experts that were uh, queried in this survey. Um, well, from my understanding, <clears throat> is the centroid is typically. Uh, geographically the center of that city. Mm -hmm. So uh, Houston, for example, downtown, right? Just like street signs. Right. If you're in Houston, you'll see a sign that'll say, you know, if you're in a suburb, Missouri City or whatever, you'll see a sign that says 16 miles to Houston. Right. But you're in Houston, right? right. So you're it's still it's calculating Houston. from where you are to downtown Houston. And so I think in regards to that, the proximity, it's the same thing. Right. So I give you a a KD address, okay. then technically you're really not in Houston, right? According to the Central, right? You're you know 30, 40 30 miles, miles out. out, and so I think you know. So how important in terms of local places, not just local? Well, I think this is mostly about local places, but we're also talking about kind of localized search. How important is being at the center of the town? So I search Plummer Houston. Um, yeah, your address should be. You know, Houston. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. should be in one of those zip codes that they consider in Houston. You know, if it's 004, <laughs> I told you that was yeah. <laughs> If it's 004 or... Um, I'll get I'll get Okay. 004 or, you know, any one of these other zip codes that's in the city of Houston, um, considered downtown or whatnot, then your best bet for coming up ranking for that. Would be close to, you, know, you want to be close to the center of Houston. Now, I, a lot of people have called and asked me, how do I get in that? that pack how is it that everybody that's listed in that local search is listed like right around the center of the city of houston you know but you know i think everyone has seen this where there'll be five listings right around the center of houston and then there'll be one guy 10 miles outside of houston how does he get in that listing and the the 100 percent correct answer is i have no idea <laughs> only google knows that but I can. This is this is basically a, a, a canned response. I tell everyone: make sure that you have a listing. You've claimed it. You have the right keywords in it. You're in the right categories. Your listing is 100% complete, uh, which is probably one of the most important factors. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, hope and pray. People like that <laughs> benefit that. from having uh, remote locations. Okay. Corporate office mm -hmm. may be in Sugarland, right? Mm -hmm. But I have a remote office on Westheimer, mm -hmm. right? I got another remote office, you know, somewhere else downtown. And so while they're not the corporate office, he does have a a legit yeah, satellite remote, office. Yeah, satellite office that's in Houston. Mm -hmm. And so the little dot is showing the corporate office, but he he has work in, in locally there in Houston. So you know I I don't um, I'm not gonna recommend that you go get office space downtown if you don't have to or toward the city centroid. Um, would it help? Probably. 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 <laughs> yeah. But there's other ways around it. And is there better ways to spend your money? Yeah. There's definitely better ways that to spend hope, your yeah. money. That's, yeah. that's a better way to spend your money instead of moving downtown. Yeah, there you go. So uh, that's a big issue. I know a lot of people wondered about that. So just get your listing up and make sure it's complete and looks good. Um, and then you should be able to get around that city centroid issue. All right. The next one we've got is product service keywords in place page description. So this is not the title. Mm -hmm. We covered the title already. Yeah. It's actually in the description. And how important is that? Uh, we've got a 2.49, which that says high importance. We've seen higher, obviously, uh, and uh, and an agreement of 1.15. Remember, lower is better. Uh, also considered high agreement. So, um, content. What do you guys think? Yeah, this I, I mean, <laughs> this is like this is what you do if you have some e-commerce website and on your product page you list the product description. 
um, since this is Google Places and it's a place page, it's not considered duplicate content to mm -hmm. copy that same description yeah. and place it on your Places page. Right. You know, um, now you don't want to describe one product on your place page. You probably want to describe, you know, your company or the different products you guys offer. But uh, yeah, definitely make it keyword rich um, and and don't and spam. Then, yeah. Don't, don't keyword care. spam. And, and, and people because are, people actually read this, right? Yeah. yeah it's exactly. not. A, it's not a. Uh, oh, if I if I do a great job on this, I'm gonna get great well, placement. I, I feel. I don't know if people actually read it or not. This oh, is yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Because I feel like when you get that 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 top seven listing, A through G, boom, the is. link goes to your site. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to actually click the place page, mm -hmm. link to the right to actually to get even to the get there. Page, yeah. You, you are know, right. And so I'm not sure how many people read it or not. If they do, great, write a review. You know. But if you don't, um, I'm fine with you clicking directly to my site. Yeah. I actually prefer you click directly to that's, the site. That's true because it's got I've got you know the flash of our site, the the look and feel of the yeah, site. Yeah, CTA, it's, it's ready for you. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I almost see this. I'm surprised. That I would have thought there'd be more uh, importance and more agreement because for me, it's like have a listing mm -hmm. and make sure your keywords are in the in description. The yes. Like I, I I don't even know how that's uh, uh, uh it's it's they're they're together, right? Yeah. I mean, in fact, you would almost put this first, except you have to have a listing in order to actually to have, have a description. Yes, That's yeah. the only reason a listing is more important. Um, so I don't, I, I'm a little surprised at, uh, at, at at the fact that the agreements. It's kind of like off off uh, off site SEO work, right? Right. We do all this stuff on our places page just so we can get people to our website. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so. And then we do all this work on our website just so that we can have get them you off turn off the website and give us a call, yeah. send us an email, mm -hmm. write us a, a letter. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to throw that. All right, uh, next one talks about associating <laughs> photos with your place page. I thought this was kind of um, duh, like, and yeah, this was self-explanatory. Yeah. You have to have photos. What I get a lot of is how many photos? As many as they'll allow, and I think yeah. it's five. Yeah, it's five photos, five videos. Well, okay. and, and we've we've talked uh, a lot about your listing needs to be a hundred percent complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think you have to have at least two pictures for a hundred. I don't think you have to have all five for a hundred percent complete okay. listing. Yeah. But go ahead and put all five. Um, uh, we also started putting our pictures on Picasso, which is a Google product. So mm -hmm. you can put tags, and you can have extra information about that image, and mm -hmm. then have that tied back to uh, your Google Places listing. Um, yeah, it, this really goes back to uh, the fact that we know Google gives precedent to people who have a hundred percent complete mm -hmm. Google Places listing. Make sure it's a hundred percent complete. I mean, that's you have a, a you know a popular person in your industry, you know, or in your company, put their picture. Yeah. Another great picture would be your logo. Another great picture would be your company storefront. Another good picture would be your most popular product. Mm -hmm. You know, I would put a series of different pictures along with uh, associated videos. Yeah, make sure your make sure your videos are there. I'm sure we're gonna it, it's got to hit videos at some point. What uh, what do we got next? We're on number uh, 20 already. Associating a local area phone, uh, a local area. <laughs> <laughs> associating <laughs> local area code as primary place page phone number. You yeah. know, this is one that I have never actually um, even, even thought, thought about. about. Yeah, me it, either. It was just. You know, every time yeah, we set up a, great a local, question. Great question. every time we set up a local uh, a local listing for a client, they always have a local phone number for that particular area. So it's mm -hmm. never really been a question. Now, some of them may have 800 numbers, and yeah, we'll put that in, but the local number goes first. Why? Because it's a local listing. Yeah, they're tracking um, area codes. Yes. Um, just like they know. And from a user perspective, um, I live in the suburbs where the majority of our area codes are 281. Mm -hmm. And so if I see a listing and it's 713, that lets me know that it's probably not close to me. Okay. Right. <laughs> so I don't. I'm going to go for the two eight one. I'm wondering if even. I mean, we've kind of have these concrete thoughts, uh, but I, I. I'm more and more. I'm getting uh, area codes of, of business contacts that I'm have to do business with who work in Houston, who live in Houston, mm -hmm. who have you know an area code from California, mm -hmm. or you know if you had brought yours from yeah. Michigan, there's no reason you don't have to change it. You're not. You don't pay extra fees to make local calls here in Houston from mm -hmm. your uh, from your Michigan cell phone or or whatever. So I think uh, I, and then Google Google phone. Well, right? the I whole think, concept is mm -hmm. I never change my phone number, 
So if I move to California, yeah, maybe I have a home phone, but I just forward my Google phone to that home to phone. That number. That's so, why I'm not so sure if mobile phones work best for Google Places. I think the better uh, the better direction to go would be a landline. Yeah. You know, a landline yeah. with a with the area code that determines where you are geographically located. I so think I think there's a better fit. I think we're seeing what we saw here, which was a, a, a it says high importance, which I I would say medium importance, uh, but low agreement. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so you're all over the map. Does it you know because a business could legitimately do business in Houston with a California area code do it and, it doesn't, and it doesn't matter. Yeah. It, I do all of them. You the, got four numbers. Post all four. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think we've we've made it through 20 of these. We have any blank stare news or we oh, got yeah, any? some blank stare news. So right, everybody well, knows. Oh, for blank stare. <laughs> That's that was good. Yeah, that was yeah. 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 Okay, so everybody knows, you know, uh, <laughs> Verizon, good. right? Right. Brought the iPhone. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. And so we made a huge hoopla, but I got two pieces of Bronx there news related to that. Number one, uh, Verizon, I don't understand this. Answer this for me. Even though um, I'm Android for life, so I won't mm-hmm. ever go, but just got a question. Um, iPhone 4, Verizon offers 4G speed, mm-hmm. but the iPhone 4 that they brought over Holy only crazy. works on 3G. What was the point of that? That was just to make this phone right here, the Evo, Evo. <laughs> <laughs> that much better. <laughs> I didn't get that. Oh, and then after Verizon took it, one of the AT&T customer service reps tweeted, oh, this some bull. <laughs> <laughs> now they have a choice? That really sucks for me. <laughs> so, you know, like, come on, Rachel. Her name is Rachel. Come on, Rachel. Like, for real. You know, your job is on the line. Yeah. yeah for real. Oh, no. <laughs> Rachel got fired. Yeah, <laughs> Trust. If you Rachel. found that, then our boss probably did, too. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, I think that was a bad move. Well, I, it was, I don't know if it was a Verizon move or an AT uh, or an Apple move, but Here's, yeah, I'd be pissed. He, I do Verizon. think one thing that is going to come out of this, you know, a lot of people have blamed the AT&T network for the iPhone's failings as mm-hmm. a phone, mm-hmm. right? And, and I've read in other places that... Uh, other phones on the AT&T network are fine. Yeah. Okay. Right? So you don't, you know, whatever the Samsung, whatever. you know, freebie phone that when you sign up at AT&T, it, it works fine. It doesn't drop calls. So I think we're going to see as we switch, as they switch networks, it's going to have the same quality. What mm-hmm. I mean is low quality of service. And people will begin to realize that it's a great, uh, it's a great iPod. It's a great mini iPad, yeah. and it's a marginal phone. Yes. And, uh, and the, this is better. Yeah. The Evo. The Evo. Android. Another Google product. Yeah. <laughs> they, need to, they need to start yeah, sending us a check. Yeah, we need to send us a check. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Maybe Matt can help us out with that, yeah. Mr. Cuts. All right, this has been another great podcast. This was podcast number 92. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening. Uh, you have made us the most popular SEO podcast on iTunes. That is entirely because of you. I am a little depressed because we have not received a review in a little while. You can get a review, uh, make a review of us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash ewebstyle. Or just get onto iTunes, create a simple account. I think it's a two-minute process mm-hmm. or something. Create an account and write a review about us. Uh, it's been over a month, um, not, yeah. even, not even counting the break, that we haven't had a review and uh, we know that there's a few, well, we know there's, uh, what, 72 likes, so uh, I don't think we have 72 reviews. So go out there, you're listening, yeah. you're enjoying the, the information, <laughs> you're enjoying the, hum- the humor, uh, or maybe not. Um, go, go write a review. Uh, until the next podcast, my name is Chris Burris. Paul Hansen, Charles Lewis. Bye-bye for now. Did he just leave? No, I think he got on the phone. So the recording failed online, so it may not show up on our YouTube. On our Ustream? Ustream. But that happened to me before. I'll, I'll double check. Have you ever had these these kinds of issues? You, I don't record. I think you said one. At, oh, yeah, you don't record. I don't record. I recorded one. And I learned real quick that I, me and me and the pastor of the church, we, we was like we made a decision that next day, like okay, we're not No, the next week. We oh yeah, it. because then people will stay home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody stayed home. I'm talking about the views shot up during the week. 
Oh, oh yeah. Wednesday, everybody's at home watching Sunday service. No. Uh, not going to record it. And plus, we sell them. Yeah. We sell DVDs and CDs, so if it's recorded, you can no just buy it. Yeah. You can just go watch it. Yeah. No, how's up? That you doesn't don't work. watch it live, then go buy it. I don't know. Yeah. Why'd you email it to me? That's pretty much how it's done Okay. What's our tip? Uh, complete your. Probably. Complete your Google Places. Yep. <laughs> You guys were right. <laughs> he did show up. Good morning. I'm doing very well. Happy New Year to you. Same to you. I don't know what I do in my time. 